So first, to talk about hepatitis B virus. This is a huge problem worldwide. Um, you can see on the first line there that about 2 billion people worldwide have been uh, infected with the virus, and about 240 to 250 million people continue with chronic infection. And so it's really this group uh, that's at risk for these problems and for risk for developing liver cancer. Almost 800,000 people die each year uh, due to cancer or liver disease. And in the US, we have about 1.2 million people, which may be an underestimate, uh, that have chronic hepatitis B. And you can see at the bottom there how many new infections uh, we had in 2013, almost 20,000. This is a little bit difficult probably for you to, um, to see, but as I mentioned, uh, awareness is a big problem. And so for hepatitis B, high-risk persons should be screened. So multiple um, agencies will recommend that the people listed in these groups uh, should be screened for hepatitis B. So I'm just going to read through those because you probably can't read them in the back. Uh, but people that were born in regions of uh, intermediate or high prevalence, so that's greater than 2%, um, or unvaccinated US-born people, uh, whose parents are from a country where there's greater than 8% prevalence. So um, the countries that are largely affected are um, many countries in Asia as well as sub-Saharan um, sub Africa. Uh, HIV positive individuals, uh, injection drug users, household contacts, sexual partners of those known to have hepatitis B, uh, men who have sex with men, pregnant women, those receiving chemotherapy or immunosuppressives, and those on hemodialysis. Uh, so all of these people really should be screened for hepatitis B. At the bottom here, you see uh, a bunch of pictures of livers. Um, so this on the left here, this is a normal appearing liver. This is a cirrhotic liver on the right here. And this is the sort of natural history of hepatitis B. So if someone gets an acute infection, depending on the age of exposure, you may progress on to developing chronic disease. Uh, so the younger that you are when you are infected, the more likely you are to develop chronic disease. And once you develop chronic disease, the virus stays in your body, and it's very unlikely that it will clear on its own. And over time, you can go on to develop cirrhosis. So we see up to about a 10% annual incidence of cirrhosis in patients that have chronic infection. And then liver cancer rates in this group are up to 8% per year. So what do we do to stop this? So for hepatitis B, we have vaccination. So we've had the hepatitis B vaccination for a long time, and the vaccine is extremely effective. So it can prevent infection in about 95% of people. Uh, here in the US, we do have universal infant uh, vaccination that's recommended, uh, though it's still somewhat imperfect. Um, and we still do have infants that uh, acquire hepatitis B, unfortunately. Um, we attempt to screen all pregnant women uh, in, in attempts to identify um, infants that may be at risk and take measures to prevent uh, mother-to-child trans uh, transmission. And we also advocate for catch-up vaccination and vaccination of high-risk adults. So for hepatitis B, we can prevent it by vaccinating. Unfortunately, for those that have chronic hepatitis B, there is no cure currently available. Um, and while there is no cure, there are very effective treatments. So we have oral therapies to treat hepatitis B, uh, which are highly effective. Um, they can suppress the virus. And when you suppress the virus, you can reduce the risk of transmission, reduce progression of disease, reduce deaths, and reduce incidence of liver cancer. So for hepatitis B, we can both prevent liver cancer by using vaccination. And for those that have chronic infection, we can actually treat them and lower their incidence of liver cancer also. <clears throat> so now to switch gears a little bit to hepatitis C. Uh, hepatitis C remains a huge problem in the US. Um, worldwide, we think about 150 million people are affected and about 350,000 people die each year um, as a result of this virus. In the US, um, we estimate that upwards of 3 million people have chronic infection with hepatitis C. Um, and that's probably somewhat of an underestimate uh, because uh, most people are unaware of their infection and we don't have a um, great framework for um, surveilling the population yet. <coughs> Awareness, again, remains a huge problem. About 75% or three quarters of people that have hepatitis C virus do not know that they have it. So if you don't know that you have the disorder um, or the disease, um, you can't seek treatment. There are two uh, main ways in which uh, we screen people. So for a long time, we've recommended risk-based screening. And that's uh, shown on the right there after the first line. So uh, people that have a past or current injection drug use history, 
blood transfusions or, or organ transplants prior to 1992. Unfortunately, before 1992, we didn't know about hepatitis C, so many people contracted this through blood transfusion. Uh, HIV infection, people that have abnormal liver enzymes, children born to HIV-infected mothers, um, those that have been incarcerated, used intranasal drugs, healthcare workers who have been exposed via needle sticks, and hemodialysis, all those people need to be screened uh, based on risk. Unfortunately, the thing we found is that when, even with risk-based screening, that physicians are not good at identifying risk factors in patients, um, and many patients don't bring forward that they have risk factors. Uh, so risk-based screening has not done well over time in terms of identifying people. And so recently, we've also moved towards birth cohort screening. So the baby boomer cohort, those born between 1945 and 1965, has amongst the highest prevalence rates for hepatitis C. So it's recommended now that anyone who was born between those years get a one-time screening for hepatitis C. For hepatitis C, unlike hepatitis B, there's no vaccination. Um, so we, we can't prevent this through vaccination, but we can prevent it through improved awareness um, of risk factors and education and better disease surveillance. Uh, the one thing we do have for hepatitis C that we don't have for hepatitis B is a cure. So hepatitis C can now be cured in almost all patients. Uh, the key is to identify people that have it and then get them into treatment. But we can cure almost everybody now that has hepatitis C with an all oral therapy that's limited duration and has very few side effects. Um, so again, this can be cured. And we know that curing hepatitis C results in a reduction in mortality. So we can improve uh, people's lifespan by treating them for hepatitis C. And there's evidence that curing hepatitis C reduces liver cancer. Uh, so this is very important here. So I gave you a little bit of an overview of uh, hepatocellular carcinoma, or primary liver cancer, um, which is increasing in incidence. The death rates are very high from this disease. Uh, hepatitis B and hepatitis C are really the leading causes of liver cancer. And hepatitis B vaccination can prevent hepatitis B infection, and it can prevent liver cancer um, if we vaccinate people. Hepatitis B treatments can also reduce the risk of cancer in those that are chronically infected. No vaccination for hepatitis C is currently available, though treatments for hepatitis C can cure infection in most people and can reduce the risk of liver cancer. And public awareness of viral hepatitis is really the key, um, I think, going forward to reducing morbidity and mortality from these causes. Thank you for your time.